Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, you have caught me on a week where I have a special treat for you. Um, so we're going to do an interview with Ishan, who is one of the fellow contributors of Inkscape. Uh, but before that, let's get into some of the stuff that I've been up to myself. Um, primarily what I did this week is I focused on fixing a pretty substantial issue with the way in which the uh, handles were being positioned on the canvas. This was a regression from 1.3. So if you were using the 1.4 beta, you probably noticed that the resize handles and also several other handles were ever so slightly off, uh, not just by one pixel, sometimes by as much as three pixels. And uh, this is because of some of the work that was done to basically try and make them, them um, smoother and be painted with less uh, blurring. Um, but of course, a, a, an error, a mathematical error crept in with calculating how big the, the caching size should be. So a lot of these uh, renderings of all of these ha handles were actually off by three pixels on the uh, right side and the bottom side, which means that as soon as you uh, rotated them in order to fit them on the screen in the right orientation, they would no longer be positioned correctly. Um, this is now fixed. Um, and in fact, the fix is comprehensive enough. It actually fixes stuff in master as well for 1.5. So I'm very, very pleased with that. And uh, yeah, I decided to work on this because even though it seems inconsequential that, uh, you know, th these handles are like slightly off, um, people notice. And even if they don't actually uh, articulate the fact that the these things don't look quite right, it makes using Inkscape uncomfortable if things aren't balanced correctly. So it's worth spending some time just polishing this kind of thing, especially removing this as a regression, so that Inkscape actually feels nice to use and doesn't look weird when you are resizing things. Okay, so that's primarily what I worked on. There was some color stuff, merge review stuff, uh, developer me meetings are going well. So let's have a word with Ishan and see what he's been up to. So, Ishan, um, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Hey, hi everyone. I am Ishan. I am based out of New Delhi, India, and at my day job, I am a backend engineer. At my day job, I like to, like to work on Inkscape, helping out, uh, answering using user queries. I've been using Inkscape since my college days, so I've got a lot, I've got a lot of value out of. It, so I thought I should contribute back. And how, how did you get started uh, contributing to Inkscape? Uh, I was a GSOC student, a Google Summer of Code student. Yeah. Uh, since then, I, I got busy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now I've got some time. So I started, uh, I thought, why not try to hack it? Inkscape itself, because I worked on the website, which was Python. So. Excellent. So um, tell us about some of the work that you've been doing re recently. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm on a sort of a mission to make Inkscape prettier and modern. So I was looking at my file manager and selecting files. And I noticed something that when I select the files, uh, those files get highlighted as I select them. And I have sort of a rectangle that allows me to select files. Then I checked, does Inkscape do this? And turns out it didn't. I thought it would be a great uh, visual cue for people selecting because I've often heard people, Inkscape selecting uh, rectangles are very thin and they are grayish and they, they hide over objects. So this is hopefully uh, one of the things that will improve visual experience of the users when selecting objects. Right. So so they were the the selection boxes are hard to see, right? Yeah. 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 If if you're working on a black or gray artwork, they are really difficult to see. So here we have uh the the Inkscape that you're, you you built, right? That's running on your local machine. No, oh, no, it's uh, Inkscape 1.3.2. So I first want to show what the old selection rectangles oh. look like and then I'll show the new. This is a very minor thing, but uh if I now drag on the canvas, 
you can see I was able to drag it and this is the rectangle that appears, right? That allows me to select objects. So this is the most uh, basic selection rectangle that Inkscape has. It's the default one. There is also a touch rectangle mode. So if I enable this, this is an option in the toolbar. If I enable this, notice the color of the rubber, uh, this selection changes. Yeah, what difference it, it makes is now I don't have to drag the box. I don't have to make it so that the objects are wholly inside the box. I can drag it partially. And even if a small part of that rectangle touches the object, that object gets selected. Apart from boxes, Inkscape also has selection paths, uh, which in other tools uh, they call lassos or touch selections. So if I now hold Alt and I drag on the canvas, you can see I can draw paths over objects and any object that the curve touches will get selected. So now let me show the uh, changes that I've made. Oh, I'm excited. So these are the same objects. Uh, you uh, you have to ignore the, the boundary, the, the rectangle that comes uh, on this. I am actually working on improving this as well. Code nice. isn't quite finished yet. So I'm on the selector tool. Uh, if I drag on the canvas, you can see the color of the rectangle is now blue. So this is in line if you've selected objects in other programs. Uh, this is how they represent selection. Notice you have a completely different uh, rectangle. So earlier it was just it, the color became red, the outline became red. Yeah. But now it's a completely different box visually. So that probably will help people to differentiate between these two different modes. Nice. When it's touch box, it's got a pattern that's a, a diagonal stripe. Yes. And when it's yeah, a right. inclusion yeah. path, uh, it's a, a so solid semi transparent fill. Uh, I also showed uh, the touch path. So if I now hold Alt, I can do this. So notice that the color of this path also has changed. It's basically making it more consistent across Inkscape. Nice. If I do multiple objects, I can select multiple objects. I was just about to say, is this is, is this are these styles uh, themable? Can can you change them through changing the the, the CSS theme? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so these styles are controlled by CSS. Inkscape uh, ships with a CSS file by default. You can in your custom user preferences uh, uh, override those settings. So I have this example ready. What I'll do is I'll make the fill black. I'll also make the outline black. Okay. Excellent. Now I'll write to the file and notice the this file is config Inkscape UI handle theme custom. So this will be different on different platforms. Uh, now I've changed it to black. So notice when I draw it. Oh, sorry, it's not fill. It's oh, it's huh. not outline. It's fill. So so it, it it updates immediately. You don't have to even restart Inkscape. Yes, and you can also put hex values there. Yeah. So if I put pink, it's pink. You can, of course, uh, separate these styles. A place where this is useful is if you're working on an artwork, which is most of the colors there are black or blue. You usually would work with that artwork. So it gives you the ability to change the selection rectangle so that it's easier for you to see. If, I, if I'm saying it correctly, no other vector graphics program allows theming of uh, selection handle. So this is thing that is currently unique to Inkscape. So did you did you work with a um, designer or a, a user experience person when you were developing oh, this? Oh, yeah. So the design of all these boxes and parts, I collaborated with Adam Bellis from UX team. This is a very good pathway into Inkscape if someone wants to contribute because UX changes are something that are immediately visible. And if you do it correctly, you like feel you have, that you've made some changes. Oh, there, there is one thing that actually for me was important. I, I think I didn't show it here. I'll convert this object to paths. What I can do is I am in the node tool. So I can hold the alt key and I can draw uh, draw over these nodes. Oh, so it's the nodes selection as well as the, the, the regular selection tool. Yes, anywhere in Inkscape there is selection. I've changed those types. I love it. Every, almost every tool in Inkscape uses selection in some way. You might not notice it. There is selection in gradients tool, mesh tool, paint bucket, cost node, and selector tool. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, I think for 1.2, I, I fixed the node tool because it had its own custom selector 
class. Yes. I changed it so that the node tool and the select tool were using the same technology because otherwise they just had so many inconsistencies between them. That's the kind of uh, refactoring <laughs> work that we've been doing actually for, for 1.5. There's, there's so much new code GTK4 handles and various other things. And I think it's 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 worth highlighting just how much work is going into the back end, uh, like the CSS stuff that you were just showing that kind of enable a lot of the, this front end work as well. So I was new to the code base. Uh, I didn't know C++ as well. But what helped me was uh, I knew you had worked on selection bands before because you showed it in a video. Oh, yeah. And I knew Sanidya Pride, GSUC student. He worked on the CSS stuff. So I was sort of aware that these things were possible. So to actually know where to look to change these things. So that saved a lot of my time. Yeah, it's 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 really fun actually being able to work with other people, especially when they have such different skills that you can really lean on. Um, I've, I found with my work, um, working with Adam and working with like Rene or Mark, th there's so many different um, perspectives about how code can be written or how designs can be produced and it really does make contributing to Inkscape like a really fun thing to do. Also like the review process of the code that you contribute so you open an MR as soon as possible to get feedback and then you iterate over those that feedback. People are very helpful. An MR is a merge request. Oh sorry. It's <laughs> Yep, or if you're using, if you're a user of GitHub, it's a pull request. It's just terminology that we use to basically how you submit new pieces of work to, to Inkscape, so it can be reviewed by other contributors. Yeah. So, so um, to to finish up here, how do you how do you feel about how um, easy it is to sort of get involved with Inkscape? Uh, I mean, it's for me it was very easy. We usually work in isolation, and uh, but we do review our others merge requests and uh, comment whenever we have issues. But when you're in a meeting, you can actually just uh, ask a person, OK, hey, what? how does this work or what should I do? So developers meetings, uh, the developer meeting was very helpful for me for this kind of work. And Inkscape is very inviting. It's very eager to get people in to work on it because the more people that work on Inkscape, the better that is because more hands means less load on everyone. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's literally how Inkscape gets developed is primarily through volunteers contributing. And um, it's worth reminding, I think, our user base that like they can get involved at any time, uh, when they, whether it's testing things um, or fixing bugs or designing new things. Absolutely. Excellent. So um, thank you so much for doing this interview. It's been great fun to see your work and to see your progression in the project. Thanks for giving me the support. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, it's uh, uh, 3 a.m. Uh, it's almost 4 a.m. Oh, now. I had an entire sorry. I had an entire pot of tea to keep, keep myself awake. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you for joining me. Um, I've also been doing some of the UX studies that I mentioned last week. Uh, those will be published in the coming weeks once I've collected them all together and done all the video editing. A surprising amount of work, actually. Um, so uh, keep an eye out for those. And thank you for your support.